Russia has deployed troops in Donetsk and Luhansk after recognizing two rebel-held regions as independent states. Russia reckons that there'll be peacekeeping in the region. This afternoon, Boris Johnson repeatedly used the word invasion in relation to the move by Russia and imposed sanctions on five Russian banks and three individuals in the UK. Let's have a listen. Now the UK and our allies will begin begin to impose the sanctions on Russia that we have already prepared, using the new and unprecedented powers granted by this House to sanction Russian individuals and entities of strategic importance to the Kremlin. Today, the UK is sanctioning the following five Russian banks. Rossiya, IS Bank, Gen- General Bank, Promziaz Bank and the Black Sea Bank. And we are sanctioning three very high net worth individuals, Gennady Timchenko, Boris Rottenberg and Igor Rottenberg. Any assets they hold in the UK will be frozen. The individuals concerned will be banned from travelling here. Now, there you go. That was Boris Johnson. Joining me now, though, is our Home Affairs and Security Editor, Mark White. Mark, uh, thank you very much for joining us. I have to say, this is a very fast-moving um, situation to many. It might actually be a bit confusing what's going on. One minute, I think it was last Wednesday, there was definitely pretty much going to be an invasion. Then there wasn't. Then Russian troops apparently had uh, withdrawn. Then they hadn't. And now here we are today. Just bring us up to speed, if you will, on what has happened to provoke this response from Boris Johnson. Well... A lot of confusion on the ground, and I think all we can sort of take our cue from is the sort of pictures that are coming out of the region. So last night, of course, we got that declaration from the Russian president that he was recognising these two breakaway Russian-supporting self-declared rebel republics, uh, that he would recognise them and that he would send in troops to support them, he said, to keep the peace. Of course, that, in Western eyes, is an invasion. That's why the sanctions have been triggered today. Uh, In terms of the actual invasion, I'm not sure it's begun as such because we've had pictures coming out of uh, Donetsk, one of the two cities uh, that are being recognised that are uh, self-declared rebel Uh, breakaway republics, uh, both uh, Donetsk and Luhansk. Uh, Pictures in Donetsk show vehicles driving about, as you can see there, with the Russian flags out of the windows, tootings of the horn and and alike, but no tanks. Uh, You can bet your boots if there were Russian tanks on those streets, the cameramen would be getting shots and that would be finding its way out into the news agencies as well. We'd all be running those pictures. So they're certainly not in those two cities. Uh, Whether they've crossed that line into eastern Ukraine or not, we simply don't know. Uh, The picture is rather confused at the moment, Michelle. Yeah, and I mean, we just heard in the news bulletin there as well that there was references to this potentially being one of the pivotal moments for Europe's uh, security in a generation. So, of course, it's essential uh, that misinformation is quashed wherever possible. Keir Starmer, for example, Mark, has said that these sanctions don't go far enough and he's talked about uh, stopping what he calls or what's being called propaganda channels. What's your thoughts on that? Well, there's no doubt that uh, the Russians are expert when it comes to propaganda. They have a well-oiled machine pumping out uh, lots of pro-Russian news uh, and um, uh, obviously on social media as well. Lots of, we often term them, bots uh, out there trying to get across the Russian viewpoint. Uh, So they're there, they do that. Uh, The... British government has warned just today, in fact, uh, to be on the lookout for renewed activity, uh, especially cyber attacks from Russia as well. So it is a real problem, potentially, uh, this grey area, they call it the grey area conflict, uh, which is not uh, a military conflict as such, but it is a a battle that's waged in the sort of the digital sphere Uh, on social media and, of course, across computer networks, which in itself, of course, can cause a tremendous amount of damage if it brings down systems, uh, vital operating systems for, for governments and industries in the West.
Mark White, my final question to you. Uh, do you think there's any prospect of military boots from the UK being on the ground, put into the ground in Ukraine in this situation? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, there is obviously the potential for if things really uh, were to deteriorate significantly in Ukraine, uh, for things to spill over into neighbouring NATO countries where British and other NATO allied troops are helping bolster those countries' defences. They are understandably very nervous at the unfolding situation, but actually di direct British, uh, US and other NATO forces in Ukraine, uh, it's not going to, to, to happen. Uh, that, uh, of course, Vladimir Putin knows. Uh, if, if it was a NATO uh, country that was being uh, invaded, then they, of course, would be in there and helping out that NATO ally. But Ukraine is not yet a member of NATO. It may never join NATO. Uh, and for the time being, it is on its own. Mark White, that's our Home and Security Editor. Thank you very much for your time.